To be a famous gladiator can mean money, freedom, popularity, and more. Many successful gladiators' names were known throughout the Roman Empire and much further. Such was the power of being a successful warrior. To win in the Colosseum could raise your profile to that of an ancient superstar, revered and held in high esteem by men and women alike. The famed and almost infamous Roman gladiators who battled in the amphitheaters of Rome were putting their lives and reputation on the line every time they stepped into the arena. These men, and sometimes women, were often slaves or criminals forced to do battle against one another, but the reward for their success did exist as they might gain fame, notoriety, or even earn their freedom. But it's important to note that not only was it slaves or prisoners who did battle here, free and even noble folk could try their hand in the arena, often hiding their true identity with their helmet. The politicians of Rome knew that people needed things to keep them entertained, and the gladiators were one such form of large-scale entertainment. Are you not entertained? In addition, Rome was almost constantly at war, and for the Roman army to be successful, a certain spirit was required from their men. The gladiator battles were one way to show that bravery was rewarded. If a gladiator succeeded in battle or lost with bravery, they were often rewarded or spared their life. This was almost a mantra the Roman government needed from their soldiers. Unwavering bravery in the face of stiff competition and the gladiators provided this example perfectly. To be a gladiator meant that while you were often a slave or an unfree man, you could be compensated very well should you have success. The skilled and thus successful gladiators became very rich and were allowed to have families and live a more normal life. To be a success in the gladiator arena may also result in a person's freedom, becoming a gladiator trainer, or even chosen as a politician's bodyguard. Apart from wealth and other perks, a good gladiator might be honored like a Roman soldier that died on the battlefield. It was this fame and glory that enticed even free and noble men to choose this brutal and punishing lifestyle. Welcome to Lifestyles of the Gladiators. Although a large percentage of combatants were conquered peoples, slaves, or criminals, a number of free men decided to fight. Those who weren't forced into the arena did so because the rewards were potentially immense. These men usually came from a low social standing and hoped to become popular with crowds and win patronage from wealthy Romans. Rome had three notable training schools, including Capua, which was known for the caliber of gladiators it produced. Agents would scout for potential gladiators to try and persuade them to come and fight for their honor. These gladiator schools offered both safety and incarceration. Comparable to a prison regime, they offered the comfort and security of three hearty meals a day and the best possible medical attention. However, the recruits who were free men had to live in shackles and were not allowed to speak at mealtimes. They were allowed to keep any rewards and money if they won a fight. Their diet consisted of protein and carbohydrates like barley porridge and cereals, with no option of wine, only water. Although the gladiators were fighting fit, most of them were a little on the round side. No Kirk Douglas Spartacus here. Extra padding around the midsection was desirable, as it offered some protection against superficial sword wounds. By the time the Colosseum opened, the games were well organized, with warriors placed in different classes depending on skill level, experience, and previous records. While these individuals had to fight one another, sometimes to the death, they formed close bonds and created unions called collegia with leaders. Whenever one of the brotherhoods died in battle, the union would ensure they received a proper funeral and an inscription honoring their achievements. The family of the deceased even received financial compensation. Life as a gladiator wasn't easy, but the rewards were worth the risk even for those not forced to participate. Portraits of great gladiators hung in public places, kids made clay figurines of these warriors, and the best fighters even endorsed products, like Roman Gatorade and Nike sandals. They even made movies about them. Do you like movies about gladiators? Roman women loved gladiators and considered the sweat of these men to be an aphrodisiac. But how did these individuals live and die? 
Although free men were not hauled into the arena in chains, they had to live a disciplined life once they agreed to join a school. Most gladiators ate three decent meals a day, which included meat, fish, cereals, vegetables, eggs, cheese, and goat's milk, with water as the only other drink. Even free men were shackled and slept in cells. They were only freed for mealtimes and training. On the plus side, they received massages along with hot and cold baths because hygiene was crucial as gladiators had to be incredibly fit. Training was intense, but at the beginning, the focus was on increasing the fitness of the gladiators. As a result, initial combat involved wooden swords and honing the fighters' technique and teaching them different fighting styles. The precise type of training they received depended on how much armor they wore. Heavily armored warriors needed to learn different methods than lightly armored gladiators. Some of the pros for taking up the blade were becoming a heartthrob of the women, or men if that was your thing. You could win your freedom, or lose it, fame, learn fighting skills, and possibly a 10% chance of being killed. I like those odds. Some of the cons though were, you had a chance of being killed, you had to sometimes kill others, that one guy really had it coming though. Viewed as a form of entertainment and not as a person, are you really not entertained? Some may look upon you as barbaric and unintelligent, and you were imprisoned. Comes with the territory. Gladiators only fought three to five times a year on average. On the evening before the event, a banquet was held for combatants who were told to enjoy themselves because it could be their last great meal. Contrary to popular belief, most gladiators didn't fight to the death. According to some historians, fewer than 20% of them died in the arena. If the crowd was bored by a long drawn out affair, you suck and your fighting sucks, a stalemate could be declared. Alternatively, both warriors could leave if they thrilled the audience with a brave battle. Those who ran gladiator schools didn't want their fighters to die because each man and woman was an expensive investment. It is possible that trainers taught their warriors how to wound and not kill opponents while gladiators were probably reluctant to kill their brothers. Despite the relatively small death rate during combat, the average life expectancy of a gladiator was only in the mid-20s. When a gladiator was overmatched and faced inevitable defeat, the crowd could decide his fate. The wounded person sometimes held up his finger as a request to be spared but the crowd could shout for his death if they felt he didn't put up a good enough fight. If the emperor was in attendance, it was usually left to him to have the final word. Incidentally, the thumbs down signal didn't necessarily mean death. A thumbs up could have meant death, while signs of mercy might have included the thumbs down or a clenched fist with two fingers extended. If a gladiator had to die, his opponent plunged their weapon into the victim. Apparently, an attendant dressed as Pluto appeared afterward to strike the body with a mallet while someone else checked to ensure the person was dead and the corpse was finally removed. The winner received money and a laurel branch and would run around the arena waving the palm. For free men, the goal was to earn as much as possible before retirement. Slaves hoped to one day win enough to buy their freedom. If a gladiator had an outstanding career and was allowed to leave the school, he would receive a wooden sword as a sign that he no longer had to risk his life in the arena. Gotta watch out for splinters though. According to experts, around 400,000 gladiators were killed in the arena. Considering the overall life of an average Roman citizen, becoming a gladiator didn't seem like such a bad offer at all if you take into consideration either you became a soldier for minimum pay or scraped the streets for a living keep watching those gladiator movies until next time